Hey everybody, this is Mark Huntington with Empower Kidney Warriors. And whether you're on dialysis or you've been diagnosed with kidney disease and maybe you're awaiting dialysis, I'm gonna show you step by step how to do home hemodialysis. Now, I tried perineal dialysis and it just did not work for me. It doesn't work for everybody. Then I switched to hemodialysis and I've been on hemodialysis for about a year and at that point I decided I really wanted to take back more control. I wanted to have more flexibility and even feel better. So that's when I switched to home hemo. As far as my treatment goes, one of the best decisions that I ever made. Because I do it more frequently, I feel better. I have less fluid restrictions and more, uh, I guess you would say less restrictive diet. So all of that combined, it's just a, it helps me exercise better, stay in a better frame of mind, which you know is what we want with kidney dialysis. So here we go, step-by-step -step walkthrough uh, to do home hemodialysis. This is the cartridge. This is the actual dialyzer that the blood pumps through. This right here is what actually filters out the toxins. This is all the tubing. And this, we take apart and drop this cartridge right into the kidney dialyzer, the kidney machine. Right here between the, the dialyzer here and the machine, this is my kidney. Okay, now when you're opening these, you have to make sure that these are snugly closed. Don't, don't squeeze them too tight, just make sure they're snug. The last thing you want is having one of your lines come loose. All right, now that we have this bad boy unfolded, you can see that I have the uh, yellow lights blinking. We've opened the machine. That means we have to go ahead to load the cartridge. Drop it in, it's really quite simple. There's three different access points that you have to make sure it snaps in. Okay, I like to make sure everything's clear. Nothing's stuck like that. <laughs> there we go. I like to make sure that everything is clear. Really pressed in here. Once you've got everything clear, push in and down at the same time. You have to save this for later, that's very important. That's the priming spike. And this is the sodium chloride. This is what we use for rinse back after dialysis and to prime the machine. So there we go, spike the, the bag. I give it a little extra push just to make absolutely sure that you have flow there, nothing impeding access. Drop that sucker on. Now this is the pressure pod right here. Make sure, this causes you massive problems if you forget this. Make sure, just screw this in here. Screw it down really tight. I wanna make sure that's good, good and snug there. Once everything is uh, hooked up like this, pressure pod, bag spiked, make sure that you have water flow through, yellow lights blinking, then I hit the, uh, the start button for the priming. There we go, priming has begun. It takes approximately 23 minutes to prime, and during that time, that's when I get all the supplies out. As you can see here, I've already sort of done that. I've laid out my supplies and started to get everything ready. So. After priming, I'm gonna come back on and show you guys step by step how to put yourself on. Now, you know, most people have a care partner. I have a care partner, but there are, in, in some states at some clinics, you are allowed to do dialysis completely by yourself. And even though I have a care partner, you know, burnout for your care partners, uh, for your support is, is a real thing. It's easy for us to get burned out. It's also easy for our spouses and our care partners to get burned out. So when you're able to learn to put yourself on and take yourself off, it gives you a, a lot more flexibility. It allows your spouse to also take a break sometimes. So, you know, there's a less burnout and fatigue on both of you. So that, that is just something I've, I've learned to do. And I, that's what I'm going to show you is how to do this by yourself, including cannulating yourself, taping and connecting to the machine. So we'll see you back after priming. All right, everybody, we're back. Priming is done. And to let us know, we get this obnoxious 
alarm beeping at us. You have to clear this first by hitting the mute button. Then it brings up a second page. This is just kind of a redundancy to make sure that it's cleared, fully primed, and that you've acknowledged that. Once I've hit both of those buttons, priming is done, and now I can start to do what we call the uh, snap and tap, and then connecting the lines. So here is the snap and tap, as they call it. I'm doing the kidney here. And putting the dialyzer where it belongs up there during treatment. And then I prime the dialyzer. Keep the clamp open, prime it until there's no air in that line. That's always the essential thing, no air. And we snap back in the other direction. And what we're doing is yanking the lines to pull any potential air bubbles out of the system. Again, it's a closed system and it cannot have any air because we can't have any air bubbles going into our veins. So I just go around twice. Click this little pressure pod there. All right, so once you've gone around and you feel confident that you've gotten all the air out, press stop. This shifts it into a different mode. This is where you can program the weight that you're going to take off. Which I'm going to do right now. Okay, so now that I've programmed in the weight, the machine is all set up, completely ready to go. So now that we've snapped and tapped and we've got all the air out, it's time to connect the lines. Priming again. This is the line, and this is one of the very most important things as you're setting up and connecting lines and taking yourself on and off, is you gotta be really careful about your clamps. You can have little disasters really quick if you leave things unclamped. So I always try to make sure that the lines are straightened out as much as possible. Connect these, and this is the line connecting to the dialysate, which is the, uh, the, the fluid that runs through the kidney machine, keeps everything pumping and keeps the treatment going. Unclamp those lines, and now <clears throat> we're Clamping all the major lines here. This is the, the blue is the venous line. Yellow is the waist line. And the red is the arterial line. Now we disconnect the waist line from here. Connect it to the machine down here. That way, after the blood is cleaned, after the fluid is washed through, the waste flows through the waistline and directly into the sewer system. So now that we are primed, we are snapped and tapped, our lines are connected, it's time to actually cannulate and hook myself up. All right, so first, uh, before I go and cannulate, I'm going to prep all my tape. So all the supplies, the tape's pulled, everything's ready to go. All right, now I keep a pillow so I can kind of prop my arm up. This is a protective pad so that if I 
Have a little blood that doesn't leak through to the pillowcase there. Put gloves on during the cannulation process. Of course, I've already washed my hands and my fistula, but we have to take extra precautions to make sure that everything is sterile. You know, watching out for infections, um, definitely you know, taking good care of your fistula is critical. That's absolutely essential. Your fistula is your lifeline. So I'm gonna sterilize it now with betadine, betadine. There we go. Needles out. All right, now we'll give it just a minute for the, for the betadine to dry. We wanna make sure it's dried and sterilized. And in the meantime, we'll get our needle out and ready to go. And also get our tourniquet ready. <clears throat> so I use, uh, no, there are medical tourniquets that they give you clamps with a, a little sort of a rubber band. But I have found this nifty little belt. It doesn't have any holes and it's this sort of stretchy material. It works excellent for a tourniquet. All right, in goes needle number one. Again, this is the arterial line, the red line. Blood goes out through the arterial line and into the machine. One of the more challenging parts, the parts you have to be really careful with is the tape, taping yourself. Honestly, that's one of the most challenging parts. Once you get that down, the rest of this is a breeze. This is the venous line. There we go. Again, make sure you have a good angle, a good stick. You have to make sure that you can feel that it's not pushing up against the walls anywhere. You don't want any alarms for, for you know, high pressure alarms. So put a piece of tape on. Secure it. Remove my tourniquet and do the rest of the taping, which like I said, is one of the more complicated parts. It's a little tricky, but with practice, you get it down. Again, you're looking to make sure you have a good angle and I always make sure I push it to make sure that I've got good flow. You can see it pulsing in there. more tedious part here taping up but you know you want to take a minute to really tape well because you want everything secure you don't want things moving around during treatment number one and number two you don't want alarms that makes for a really annoying treatment when you've got alarms going off It's a boatload of tape, <clears throat> but once again, if it keeps the fistula in place and protects your lifeline, then you got to do it. It's super important. Pull, uh, push again. Make sure that you have good flow on both of them. Next, I prime both of the lines. Make sure, key thing here is make sure there's absolutely no air in the top. It has to be full uh, with blood, primed with blood all the way through. Clamp the line, number two. Next, I'm gonna put heparin into the arterial line. Heparin makes it so that the blood does not clot during treatment. Go back a little bit, of course, to make sure there's no air. All right, now, I am ready to go ahead and connect myself to the machine and begin treatment. First, I connect the arterial line. Again, always check your clamps. Okay. 
items. Didn't quite tear off enough tape, but that's all right. Next, connect the Venus line. Again, check your clamps. Okay, now that I'm all taped up, my lines are connected, I can hit the green button to start treatment. Shaped like a kidney, of course. And here we go, the machine is firing up. Now, before I increase the pump speed, make sure that I take syringes and draw. Oh, there we go. Oh, first alarm. And hey, that's what, what happens. You get alarms. Okay, so we've cleared that alarm. We hit the KID button again. It will start to resume treatment. It was probably just, I think, a, an air bubble. So once again, I'm drawing fluid here. Hmm, drawing fluid there. All right, another alarm. And we're in recovery mode. See, this is real life. You have to know how to deal with alarms and know what's what. Okay, now we've kicked out of that alarm, I believe. Give it a second and see. Hmm, okay, now that's a pressure alarm. See if we can get ourselves straightened out here. Draw the saline. Now I'm making sure that you know we're off to a good start, no alarms, and the pump speed you see here starts off at 200. Pump speed is of course the speed at which it forces the blood through the machine. Uh, you want a high enough uh, pump speed to be able to get good filtration, but you don't want it so high that it causes uh, issues with, with too much pressure in the fistula. So I'm going to increase my pump speed to 400. And there we go. Fluid is set. Pump speed is at 400. And we are off to the races. So this is step-by-step uh, step how you put yourself on, including self-cannulation and getting yourself connected. Um, it's actually really easy once you get used to it. Um, so for those of you considering it, you know, take a look at this, leave comments if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from you. And if you know somebody that's going through kidney disease, share this video with them.